everybody. It's Thursday, uh, April 30th, the last day of April today. And here is your video agenda for today. Your riddle of the day is this. I stare at you, you stare at me. I have three eyes, yet cannot see. Every time I blink, I give you commands. You do as you are told with your feet and hands. What am I? You know how I love the rhyming ones. If you think you know the answer, go to Google Classroom and put the answer in. We'll see how you do. Moving on to our mentor sentence. Today is Thinking Thursday. So I'm going to give you the Mad Lib and I would like for you to fill in the blanks with words that follow the pattern using the same parts of speech as the words we replace. And here is your Thinking Thursday Mad Lib. I've given you some choices here because this was a really short sentence and I want to give you the chance, of course, to make it funny. So I said, sometimes it seems like a blank. You can put a pronoun. Pronoun was what was in the original mentor sentence. Or I will let you put a proper noun in there. Remember, that can be the name of a specific person, place, or thing. So you can actually name someone or something. And then blank verb. Who blank, again, you can put a pronoun or a proper noun in this blank. Am, and you can change that am to are, or is, or was, or whatever else will fit. Except blank pronoun or proper noun. So it occurs to me this would be a great opportunity maybe to name some of your friends in this sentence um, and make a really silly sentence. I look forward to seeing your answers. Continuing on with our study of ancient mythology, if you have not already, listened to and or read the story of the tongue cut sparrow from Japanese mythology, please do so. And then complete the mythology analysis worksheet. Um, if you prefer, if you like, um, you can answer the discussion question on Google Classroom. Again, these discussions aren't required. It's just since we can't all be in class together and talk about our ideas, it's sort of a way for you guys to share your thoughts. Then next, we're going to have another story. This one is from Celtic mythology, and it's called The Children of Lear. Celtic mythology, the Celtic people, were uh, lived mostly in Ireland and Wales, which is a country that's sort of just to the side of Ireland, um, also maybe a little bit in northern England. Um, there's not a lot known about those people, but we do have some surviving stories. I visited Ireland over winter break, so I've been really into Celtic mythology lately. So we'll hear that story in just a second. The people of the Tuatha de Danann found themselves in need of a king to unite and lead their clans. They called a great gathering where five prominent leaders were considered for the throne. Lear believed he was just the man for the job and was utterly certain that the crown would be his. However, the people t chose the Bodurg of Laudurg. Lear refused to acknowledge the Bogda as the rightful king and paid him a great insult by leaving the gathering without swearing fealty. The other nobles wanted Lear killed for the snub, but Bogda had been chosen as king in part due to his great wisdom. He knew that Lear was prideful, but he also believed he was a good man and a good leader for his people. He did not want to kill him or make an enemy of him, so he bade his subjects to take no action against Lear. After some time, the king received word that Lear's wife had died of a sudden illness. He offered the hand of one of his three stepdaughters to Lear as an offering of goodwill and friendship. The stepdaughters were the fairest and noblest of all the women in Ireland, and Lear struggled to choose. In the end, he chose the eldest, Aoba. Lear and Aoba lived happily together, and they were blessed with two sets of twins. Their daughter, Fionula, and son, Aod, arrived first and were followed a year later or so later by the other set of twins, Con and Fiacra. Unfortunately, Aoba died with the birth of the second set of twins. Lear was devastated, for he had loved Aoba and missed her terribly. He sought solace in his children. 
When King Bogdel learned of the tragedy, he sent another of his stepdaughters, Aofa, to wed Lear and to help raise the children. Lear took Aofa as his wife, but he remained devoted to his children. Aofa grew resentful of Lear's constant attention to the children. The older they grew, the worse it got, to the point that Lear insisted that he sleep close to them, so he knew they were he was ne- so they knew he was never far away. Aofa tried many different things to distract Lear. She tried to send the children away to relatives and faked a year-long illness. However, Lear's attention never wavered from his children. Aofa grew desperate and decided that she needed to take more drastic action. She arranged for her and the children to go see her stepfather, King Bogda. Fionula was reluctant to go because she had foreseen in a dream that something terrible was to happen to her and her brothers if they went. However, she was just a child and knew her misgivings would be written off as a child's imagining. So she and her brothers went with the Aofa. On the first stop of the journey, Aofa offered large purses of gold to each servant to kill the children. They all refused, and in a fit of rage, Aofa drew a sword intent on doing the deed herself. However, she faltered at the last moment and was unable to carry out the dreadful act. They continued on the journey until Aofa declared that they should stop at Loch Diavrech and on the river Inni, so the children could cool off with a swim. The children were excited, except Fionola. Again, she tried to resist her stepmother's plan, but in the end, joined her brothers in the lake. Aofa had at some point in her early life studied with a druid and learned magic. She had kept it a secret all these years, but called upon her training as the children splashed in the shallows of the lake. Murmuring ancient words and using the wand of a druid, she cast a terrible spell. When she fell silent, the children of Lear were transformed into swans. Fionola cried out to her wicked stepmother, How could you do this? Have mercy. You cannot leave us like this forever. Aofa saw what she had wrought, and some part of her hard heart softened just a little. I cannot undo what is done. You are doomed to live as swans until a king of the north takes a queen of the south. Until then, you shall spend three hundred years here in Lake Diabrech. Then you shall spend the next three hundred years in the Sea of Moyle. Finally, you will spend three hundred years in the Iris Doman. However, I leave you with your voices, and your song shall be the most beautiful in all of Erin. Following these words, Aofa fled from the destruction she had done. Aofa continued to her stepfather's castle. When the king asked about the children, she lied and said that Lear forbade her to bring them. King Bogda was indeed the wisest of men, and knew that something was not right with his daughter's story. He sent a messenger to Lear, who, upon learning that his children were missing, headed to the king's holdings. On the way, he went past the lock where his children were lamenting their fate. When he heard their voices, he stopped and was dismayed and furious when he discovered what his treacherous wife had done. Lear was wild with grief and anger. His children sang to him, immediately calming him. They spent the night on the shores of the loch before Lear pushed on to find Aofe. Lear reached Bogda's castle and confronted Aofe. When the king heard the whole story, he knew that Aofe had to be punished. He asked her what she feared most in the world. When she answered that she feared the cold north wind, King Bogda, a skilled magician in his own right, cast a spell that transformed Aofa into an air demon, where she would spend eternity blowing in the north wind. This, of course, did nothing to lessen Lear's loss. However, Bogda and Lear returned to the lock where the swans were sentenced to spend the next three hundred years. They built a shelter, and Lear lived out his days there. King Bogda also decreed that that swans were never to be killed in Ireland, 
a law that still survives to this day. People from all across Erin came to hear the swan's song, and their first 300 years passed in relative joy and comfort. At the close of the first part of their sentence, the swans took wing and flew to the Sea of Moyle, which lies between Ireland and Scotland. There they endured for the mandated 300 years being blown about in tempests, winds, and waves. Fearing they would be forever separated in the rough seas, Fianula kept a brother under each wing, and the third tucked up under her, the feathers of her breast. Fianula, their three, finally, their 300 years drew to a close, and again they took wing to journey to their last prison. As they flew over the island, they marveled at the changes in the landscape and mourned all of those they had lost. They had been largely forgotten in the last several centuries, as they were tossed about in a, in a sea and cut off from the human world. They arrived in Iris Doman and found it far more hospitable than the Sea of Moyle. They found shelter in a small inlet and settled in for their next 300 year sentence. A hermit came to the inlet and built a small shack, intending to spend his days there in quiet meditation. He knew the old lore and soon suspected that the swans of the inlet were the children of Lear. He asked them and was delighted that he had found them. He cared for them for the rest of their sentence and created a silver chain that linked them together so that they would never be separated. They were happy and their voices rang with a song again. At the end of their 900-year sentence, King Largren of Connacht in the north married Queen Dioc of the south. The queen had heard of the singing swans, and she demanded that they be brought to her. The king and his men went to the inlet and requested the swans. The hermit refused, and the king tried to take them by force. The, the silver chain was broken in the skirmish. The curse, having run its course, was broken and the swans transformed into humans. The children were over 900 years old and were withered and gray. They died moments after returning to their human forms. Fianola, always the caretaker of her brothers, managed to request that they be buried together so she could watch over her brothers for all eternity. The hermit honored her wishes and buried them standing in a circle holding each other, never to be separated. There are several versions of this tale and multiple endings. Several bear the influence of Christianity with endings that include the children being baptized before they died or that a monk was responsible for transforming them back into humans. Regardless, it is one of the most enduring and heartbreaking Irish myths. Okay, now that you've heard The Children of Lear, you can go ahead and complete the mythology analysis worksheet for this tale as well. And then, if you choose to, answer the discussion question on Google Classroom. Um, also, don't forget about your stuff for The Great Stink. I want you to complete the Central Ideas and Details worksheet and the Finding and Using Text Evidence worksheets. There are, as usual, two versions of that. There's a PDF version if you prefer to do it on paper. If you do it on paper, that's fine. Just remember to take a picture of it and turn it in on Google Classroom. There's also a Google Form available for you to do it where you can type your answers right into the Google Form. So your uh, mentor sentence is due today, so make sure you complete all four activities. I'm looking for the Monday Musings, Teacher Tuesday, Work It Wednesday, and the Thinking Thursday. Your great stink uh, central ideas and details is due on Friday, which is tomorrow. Your uh, mythology for, I mean, sorry, your analysis for the tongue cut sparrow also due on Friday. Your great stink finding detail, finding and using text evidence is due Monday. And then your analysis for uh, this new tale, The Children of Lear, is also due Monday. If you have any questions or if you need help with anything, remember you can contact me every weekday from 9.30 to 11.30 during my off video office hours. I email out the link. Uh, I mean, I sorry, I text the link every day. Uh, you can also get me on Google Classroom or through email, but remember, that may take me a little longer to respond. So if you want an immediate answer 
or if you're getting frustrated, it's always best to call to link with me on the video thing because I can contact, I can talk to you quicker. I can get your question answered quicker. All right. Have a great day and I will talk to you tomorrow.